Let's continue our investigation. In the last segment, we figured out how many ski areas are within 50 miles of the Continental Divide. Another factor important in locating any business, not just ski areas, are pro is proximity to uh, major population centers. You wouldn't want to locate a ski area where nobody could reach it, <clears throat> even if it's got the best terrain in the world. Right, folks? <laughs> but let's figure out, uh, let's say I have a question to the students. Um, how many ski areas are close to Denver? Denver being the largest metropolitan area uh, in the state. Uh, I wonder, well, let's just take a visual look at how many ski areas are close to Denver. So I'm going to zoom to my full extent. <clears throat> I'm going to turn off ski area buffers because we're, we're kind of done with that segment, so we don't really need it anymore. I'm also going to turn off my cities. Uh, I'm going to keep things fairly simple. OK, uh, actually, Maybe I don't know where Denver is. Let's say I'm let's say I'm 12 years old. I have no idea where Denver is. I'm going to right click on the uh, cities layer. I'm going to open the attribute table, and I'm going to scroll over to the right hand side. I've got something called city name there, and it's sorted by uh, alphabetical in alphabetical order. So I can see Denver there. I'm going to scroll back over and select Denver by clicking right uh, uh, in the uh, in the leftmost gray sort of column and then I'm going to right click in there and I'm going to zoom to it on the map I'm going to get rid of the table for the moment and there's Denver on the map I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see Denver in relationship to uh, other cities you know I might just turn off uh, my labels so if I if you want to do anything with the with the layer you right click on it as we've done and you can see label features is turned on. Go ahead and turn that off. So to review, I right clicked on cities and then I unchecked the label features. So now I've got Denver showing up in the cyan color, which I could change to yellow or anything else I wanted to uh, if, I, if I so desired. <clears throat> but as I zoom out here, I'm going to take a look at ski areas. Now visually, just panning over here, I can see Denver and I can see a whole bunch of ski areas that are close to Denver. If I zoom out to the whole state with the uh, full extent symbol, that globe symbol, okay, Denver's up there in the north central part of the state. If I go ahead and click on my zoom in tool and zoom down to the southwest part of the state, I can see that Wolf Creek is down there and let's see what this other one is down here. Oh, there's Wolf Creek. What about this other one over here? Uh, that's Durango Mountain Resort. So Durango Mountain Resort and Wolf Creek are a long ways from Denver. They've got some wonderful snow, but they probably have less um, visitors than some of these other areas close to Denver. Uh, and that's probably a good thing for the people that ski down there, right? They don't want the big crowds. But if you're a ski area operator, you do want some, some, some volume, some traffic volume. Uh, so proximity to urban areas is important. And as you can see, many ski areas are close to Denver, as well as Colorado Springs, the other, uh, the second uh, major uh, population center in Colorado. Okay. Now, as you know, with the GIS, we can do more than just eyeball things. Although eyeballing things, vi getting a visual impression is very important. So I like to start there. But we can use the measurement tool to close to determine the closest ski area to Denver. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here, so I can see Denver on my screen. And I can see Eldora, Loveland, Arapaho Basin. Remember that measure tool? It's down here in the in this toolbar, and it's got an arrow and a and a ruler. So I, I'm still on miles. I'm going to click on Denver, and then I'm going to click over here to Arapaho Basin. I can see that's 54 miles. You know what? I'm going to scoot my measure tool up there so I can actually get up to Eldora. Okay, now I'm going to go measure up to Eldora. That's 40 miles from Denver. Loveland looks to be. right in here so that's the 53 miles Arapaho base about 54 miles Keystone about 58 miles now that is as the crow flies so you might want to point that out to the students you couldn't get to Eldora from Denver in 40 miles unless you were in an airplane or a helicopter right folks <laughs> you've got to wind through these uh, mountain valleys and so one of the things that you could delve into is what highways would you take to each one of these ski areas um, what is the situation with traffic volume on those highways now Let's figure out how many ski areas are within 100 miles, let's say, of Denver. We've already done this in relationship to the Continental Divide buffering uh, problem that we had earlier. So it's the same kind of tool. So let's go ahead and click on the Arc Toolbox, which is that red toolbox. And I'm going to go to Buffer. Now, 
input features just like we did before. This time, though, instead of buffering the continental divide, what are we going to buffer? We're going to buffer cities, right, folks? Cities, our output, we're going to name it, uh, I'm going to call it buffer Denver 100 miles. I'm not putting any spaces in the name. I'm going to keep it, uh, uh, you can use underscores, but avoid using spaces. My linear unit is going to be 100 miles, right? That's what we've said. We want to find out how many ski areas are within 100 miles of Denver. So my unit is 100 miles. My input features are the cities. And my output feature uh, name is going to be cities buffer Denver 100 miles. We don't need any of this stuff down here, so I'm just going to say OK. And once I close that, I'm going to change my, uh, I'm going to click on the, my new layer, which is my buffer of Denver. And let's say you're a middle school student, OK? The first thing they're going to want to pick is poison overlay, probably, or biohazard overlay. So let's go ahead and just pick that, putting ourselves in the minds of, of uh, a middle school student, which is great. I mean, they're, they're experimenting with the colors and symbols and getting into the tools, which is, which is grand. Nothing wrong with that. So we've got our symbol for the 100 mile uh, of Denver with a poison overlay. So this circle is a 100 mile buffer. Now, before you buffer, you might want to ask the students, what shape do you think this buffer is going to be? If we're buffering a point, which is Denver, what shape is that going to be? So it makes sense when they actually do buffer it that this is a, indeed a circle. OK, now that we've got our circle, we can go ahead and do just like we did with the uh, continental divide problem. We can figure out how many cities or how many ski areas are within uh, 100 miles of Denver. So we go back up to the selection tool just like we did before, exactly the same procedure, select by location. So here we're going to select features from. Now it remembers what we did last time. We're not going to do what we did last time. This time we're going to select features from uh, Ski areas, Colorado, so that part's the same, that intersect what features? It's our Denver buffer, right? So pick the Denver buffer. Okay. So select features from ski areas that intersect my Denver buffer. Make sense? Okay. So, all right, go ahead and say OK there. Now let's do a quick visual. We're going to zoom in here. And these ski areas that are inside the buffer get this default selection color of cyan. You see how they're, they're colored in cyan? Let's go ahead and go up to Selection and go down to Options. If I don't like cyan, I can make those yellow, as I'm doing here. So let's say I want to make those uh, uh, yellow. OK, now they're yellow. Uh, OK, anyway, point is that you can change these colors. Now, if I go out to Sunlight, Aspen Highlands, etc., they're not highlighted. They're not inside this buffer. So I can see that there's one, two, three, but I don't have to count these, right, folks? I can go to the table of data, the I part of the, the data layer. So if I want to look at how many ski areas are, are selected, let's go ahead and right-click on ski areas, go to the table, right, the attribute table behind ski areas, and let's take a look at how many were selected. Out of 22 ski areas down here in the lower right, I have how many selected? 10. What does that mean? It means that 10 ski areas are within 100 miles of Denver. Now remember, it's 100 miles as the crow flies, not 100 miles in your car or on the shuttle bus. But still, almost half of the ski areas in Colorado are within 100 miles of Denver. So ask the students, maybe rank the items of importance. If you are going to plan a ski area, what are the most important things? You've got to lease land from the Forest Service. So land availability. We've already talked about elevation, the snowfall in that area, the uh, uh, slope of the ski area, right? Is steep or, or not steep? Steepness is going to matter. If you want a bunch of black diamond runs, you're going to want some steep terrain. We're going to talk about the direction that the slope faces in a little bit, uh, north versus south versus east versus west facing slopes. But keep that in mind for the moment. The best slopes in terms of holding ski areas are holding snow on ski areas are the north facing slopes in the northern hemisphere. And ask your students why that is. More on that later. Proximity to highways is important. Proximity to cities is important. Using these same procedures, you could figure out how many ski areas are within 10 miles of Interstate 70, are within 50 miles of Interstate 25, 
for example, using these same procedures that we just used for Denver. Okay, so we're digging deeper into our ski area analysis using some simple but powerful GIS tools to do that.